December 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Obadiah from the Old Testament. The vision that Obadiah saw, the Lord God says this concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord. An envoy was sent among the nations, saying, Arise, let us make war against Edom. The Lord says, Look, I will make you a weak nation. You will be greatly despised. Your presumptuous heart has deceived you, you who reside in the safety of the rocky cliffs, whose home is high in the mountains. You think to yourself, No one can bring me down to the ground. Even if you were to soar high like an eagle, even if you were to make your nest among the stars, I can bring you down even from there, says the Lord. If thieves came to rob you during the night, they would steal only as much as they wanted. If grape pickers came to harvest your vineyards, they would leave some behind for the poor. But you will be totally destroyed. How the people of Esau will be thoroughly plundered. Their hidden valuables will be ransacked. All your allies will force you from your homeland. Your treaty partners will deceive you and overpower you. Your trusted friends will set an ambush for you that will take you by surprise. At that time, the Lord says, I will destroy the wise sages of Edom, the advisors from Esau's mountain. Your warriors will be shattered, O Timon, so that everyone will be destroyed from Esau's mountain. Because you violently slaughtered your relatives, the people of Jacob, shame will cover you and you will be destroyed forever. You stood aloof while strangers took his army captive and foreigners advanced to his gates. When they cast lots over Jerusalem, you behaved as though you were in league with them. You should not have gloated when your relatives suffered calamity. You should not have rejoiced over the people of Judah when they were destroyed. You should not have boasted when they suffered adversity. You should not have entered the city of my people when they experienced distress. You should not have joined in gloating over their misfortune when they suffered distress. You should not have looted their wealth when they endured distress. You should not have stood at the fork in the road to slaughter those trying to escape. You should not have captured the refugees when they suffered adversity. For the day of the Lord is approaching for all the nations. Just as you have done, so it will be done to you. You will get exactly what your deeds deserve. For just as you have drunk on my holy mountain, so all the nations will drink continually. They will drink and they will gulp down. They will be as though they had never been. But on Mount Zion there will be a remnant of those who escape, and it will be a holy place once again. The descendants of Jacob will conquer those who had conquered them. The descendants of Jacob will be a fire, and the descendants of Joseph a flame. The descendants of Esau will be like stubble. They will burn them up and devour them. There will not be a single survivor of the descendants of Esau. Indeed, the Lord has spoken it. The people of the Negev will take possession of Esau's mountain. And the people of Shephelah will take possession of the land of the Philistines. They will also take possession of the territory of Ephraim and the territory of Samaria. And the people of Benjamin will take possession of Gilead. The exiles of this fortress of the people of Israel will take possession of what belongs to the people of Canaan, as far as Zarephath and the exiles of Jerusalem, who are in Sepharad, will take possession of the towns of the Negev. Those who have been delivered will go up on Mount Zion in order to rule over Esau's mountain. Then the Lord will reign as king. God, Obadiah is such an amazing, tiny, compact book that has so much in it. It's incredible to watch you be so protective of your chosen people even after all that they have done to you at this point completely turning their backs on you and Edom which is their uh, neighbors to the east not only didn't help them uh, in the Babylonian crisis but they actually ended up siding with them <laughs> in the Babylonian crisis uh, and taking full advantage of their brothers in need in that situation and you're really clear through the prophet Obadiah uh, you know, 
Uh, verse 11 says, You stood aloof while strangers took his army captive and foreigners advanced to his gates. When they cast lots over Jerusalem, you behaved as though you were in league with them. Uh, stood around and did nothing or stood around and did nothing and then took advantage of them. And, and you speak about, well, Obadiah speaks about the arrogance of Edom, frequently frequently called Esau because he was the father of the Edomites. But the Edomites were incredibly arrogant. Uh, they thought nobody could touch them. Uh, in fact, they lived in kind of this mountainous region. There's thousands and thousands of feet above sea level. So they thought their position protected them. And you, as our sovereign God, came in and said, um, yeah, no, I, it doesn't matter where you are, no matter how high you think you are, no matter how deep and low you've hidden yourself, I will not only find you, but I will take you down. And I'm going to take you down because even though I was punishing my people, that didn't give you any right to not come to their aid. That didn't give you any right to take advantage of them while I was teaching them a lesson. And I find this so fascinating because a lot of the past decade of my life has been a lot of discipline, rightfully so, and completely I know from a position of love. I'm not fussing about the discipline at all, completely deserved. But during this discipline point, I noticed that there was a lot of people whose friendships I lost, um, a lot of other people who wanted to take advantage of the opportunities at that time. And I thought it was so fascinating that before I found my new heart in you, uh, before you chose me, God, none of those same things seemed to happen. It wasn't people taking advantage of me. Uh, I wasn't losing friends. In fact, I was gaining friends left and right. And then when I, I get this new heart and I learn this new way of living and I start to practice this new way of living and I'm under discipline a lot because I'm messing up a lot, uh, it was fascinating to watch the reactions of people. Uh, there was only, for the main part of that time, there was only one person that actually came to my aid, which was my sister. And she prayed for me continuously that I would follow you, that I would quit messing around uh, and just passionately follow you. And I know that her prayers made it to your ears uh, because I'm pretty passionate about how crazy awesome you are. But I think about our own lives of people going through situations and how we react to them or how I react to them. Am I annoyed that one more time they're whining about something or one more time this has happened to them and haven't they learned from the 17 other times? And then I have to stop and I have to look at my life and go, gosh, Janelle, you did things way more than 17 times wrong. <laughs> you did them over and over and over again. And I can't believe the incredible patience you had with me, God, during that time. So much grace, so much mercy, and so much forgiveness. Okay, you screwed up again. Let me show you again what this is supposed to look, look like. You know, that constant discipline, uh, very similar to exiling your people to Babylon to teach them a lesson once and for all of understanding that you are the sovereign Lord over everything. God help us today to not be like Edom, to be so arrogant, to think that nothing can touch us, not even you. And allow us to really look outside of ourselves instead of this self-focused world and, and allow us to just look out into the world and, and see that distress, see that uncomfortable, uncomfortableness, see that pain, see that hurt, uh, see the calamity as you put it, and truly come to the aid of our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, sometimes we feel like we have so much on our plate. How are we supposed to help somebody else? And you're very clear in the Bible. You promise us that strength and that endurance. God, we just ask for that today to allow us to help our fellow brother and sister in Christ for whatever it is that they're going through. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen.